Czech Firearms Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Czech Firearms Podcast. My name is Lucas. This is Carl from Czech My Guns. Hey yo. And we have a wonderful guest today. Uh, we are so pleased that we have uh, Eric Graufel. We are at the CZ booth on IVA 2023. Uh, it's a uh, Hall 7A. And we have the privilege and the room with the guy, with that guy. So that's Eric. Welcome and uh, thank, thank you. you for We're the for champion. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for accepting the invitation. We really appreciate that. Thank you for guys for hosting me. Thank you very much. We prepared on you. We have some questions. Okay. And I'm super excited about it. So let's jump into it. Cool. But first, our sponsorship is by CZ Energy Drink. Yeah, CZ Energy Drink. Energy for our performance. That's what I'm gonna drink the whole next season, just to increase the performance. That's guys, what makes so him so good. Make sure you get some <laughs> of it. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have a commercial already. Jokes aside, yeah. Uh, the first question is uh, classic for the Czech Farms podcast, and it is very simple. How it all started? We are we are asking for the uh, the youth. Okay. So how did it all started, man? Well. It's It's a very basic story. I mean, I've, I've said it quite a lot, but so far um, I started to be at the shooting range when I was a kid. So I was, my dad was babysitting me, uh, basically. So babysitting means for him bringing the kid to the shooting range and oh, pick okay. up the brass okay. and do some cleanup at the range and so on and so on. So I, I was like seven, eight years old. Picking up the brass for the father. Yeah, exactly. For, okay. the, for the guy shooting. So they give me a penny or two so I can buy an ice cream when I go home. Oh, nice. Nice. And then at some point, you know, it's like, guys, uh, if you don't mind, give me a gun. Uh, uh, while you guys shoot, I might shoot also. So yeah. they put me on the air pistol thing, you know, shooting my uh, 4.5 uh, millimeter hair rifle okay. uh, or hair gun. And then uh, slightly moved to 22 and so on while I could hear my dad and his friends. So it was the elevating from uh, 4.5? Bit, bit, bit by bit, you know, okay. like slowly, slowly. But they were on the other side of the range and I could hear bing bing bang bang bing bang bang ding 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 and smiling laughing and so on it's like dad can I come and shoot with you and he said no first and oh. uh, okay and then I tried the, the week after hey dad uh, I finished shooting my 50 rounds you gave me after like 10 minutes can I come and shoot <laughs> he's like okay come and then it started like this so okay. I started shooting Ipsic I was eight years old Eight years. And, uh, you know, a little bit here and there, just having fun, a couple of mags here. Just and left, uh, leftovers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We were shooting with them at the start. Okay. Uh, so I was also like, okay, I'll pick up the brass also here at that place and so yeah, on. And, yeah. and then uh, and then we he, he said, okay, let's do a little bit more, a little bit more. So I, he started training me a little bit at that age and uh, shoot my first French Nationals. I was 12 years old or okay. something like that. Okay. Um, I ended up somewhere, or probably last page or almost to the last page, but not last. I finished the competition. Mm -hmm. I remember it was 18 stages by the time in France. And uh, I did finish the uh, the Nationals and, uh, and then we start shooting a little bit more often. So I start doing some level three in the countries and stuff. Until I reached the age of, what, 15, about. Uh, I was there within the top eight, five of the country. Mm -hmm. There were no production, no standard. It was IPSEC by the time. So okay. only one single division. Everybody shoots 45 cal. We are talking overall, not junior. There were no, there was, yeah. There were no oh. division, no oh, categories okay. by the time. Okay. What year are we talking about? What was the year? We're talking 90, 90, 94, 95, 96. 94, 95, okay. 90s. Uh, 90s, exactly. And um, so it pretty much was open, let's say. So everyone shoots something, but it opened. The categories came in around the 96, 97s. Um, and then, yeah, I got I got there and I had my first sponsorship, get started there. So dad got a little bit more money so he said okay we're gonna put you more uh, more bullets and you know it starts like this you get a little bit more budget it comes in mm -hmm. you, you get you get to shoot more and bit by bit you yeah. get to the did, position did you feel like obligated that you really have to no absolutely not okay. i was having fun by the time okay uh, so you fell in love with the sport already at the age of 12 or something yeah it, maybe earlier probably somewhere around that uh but i start feeling the damn interest of 
of fighting uh, and proving myself around yeah the 15 uh, and then you know 96 got my first world shoot uh, in Brazil I was second junior I was top 18 if I remember okay. uh, second junior overall um, and but the thing is I won the biggest stage of that competition overall I beat oh. all the dudes all the big dudes Rob Lisson. you mean the longest one the longest that was the okay. 28 rounds by then oh okay so and it was all a gun and run uh, and at the age of 16 I got I got a stage win on a world shoot yeah. and that was the biggest stage we had available on that match that had to so, be really wow. eye opening so that, that hooked me like yeah. shit I love that that's pretty cool and you, you probably got noticed by the you know worldwide guys like who's this guy yes. who, who won that stage yep. oh, who's this guy yep so okay. we started there Got then I got sponsored really starting to be sponsored uh, getting guns getting um, some some powder some stuff I got you and uh, and then six move on and then 98 got the uh, European championship 99 uh, got the world shoot it has to be it, it was actually a pretty hard road to the world shoot 99 uh, decision was made between Brazil and, and Philippines to go in the US and learn from the American by going there shooting against them being beaten hard yeah because uh, there was already a long tradition over there right oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah that that, was that's a mech of the of the shooting the yes, real one definitely and it's still oh, yeah. and it's still today no yeah. matter what, yeah, what yeah. no matter what we say no doubt uh, you go there it's beside being popular you, ha you have all the attention in the US that we we start to have in Europe as it is today for the last few years but it's still not as big as it could be in yeah. the US. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and then yeah, that was it. I, w I went to the Philippines one month prior in '99 to the to the world shoot. I trained and I trained and I trained. Shot every day, somewhere around 2,000 to 2,500 rounds a day for a month. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, my hands were bleeding, swelling. Get to the world shoot Cebu and managed to do the job. Okay. And then it was boom get started so yeah you know all the contracts start falling super serious you understand that okay two options now should i go a professional career into the shooting and give a chance to it or should i go back to school because i just got graduated ah. so should i go oh. back to school and and do try to do education. some 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 studies so oh. what school actually you graduated well it's just a graduation it's regular uh a mandatory school in France, so ah, I, just I, the fin I finished okay. the mandatory school, so I got graduated from it. So we got the exam, and mm -hmm. after that oh. exam, you can split to a private school, university, so you can get your I got you a, your got different you. graduation. Oh, I mean, masters and right. Yeah. Well, was your father like supportive for uh, for oh, your, for a shooting career? I mean, in the because uh, the traditional families we have or parents we have, they're like you got to have the education, the proper one. That's the when it all begins. They were supportive in the sense that get your at the, the minimum graduation that we need in France. So finish the mandatory school. Okay. Uh, and we'll give you a chance into your shooting. Oh. And from there, we'll see how, where it leads us. Okay. So we started like this. So we opened up the company, which was in charge of just managing my sponsorship contract. Oh, okay. And, uh, and then boom, little bit by little bit. So it was like very slow, very at the beginning, because mm -hmm. being French, uh, living in France uh, against a sport which is made in the US, which where the US is, as you said, the mech of it. Uh, so it was not easy to get started. And so and from the beginning, you were just the French guy for the Americans. <laughs> just Probably, and I'm still the French guy, I guess, but uh, in a different I mean, way but, today. But you are that French guy now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So was the Brazil uh, the competition where you felt that you are becoming famous and you are no. re recognized no. later on or before? Uh, I think uh, it's actually not the world shoot. I, my first world shoot who got me famous. Okay. Uh, I would say that there are two things. So it was it's Philippines or Philippines? My first world shoot win. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, got me. Didn't get me famous. Uh, I would say most likely two things: U.S. and uh, so shooting in the U.S. national and being able to win the nationals, mm -hmm. uh, and the second wall shoot. Second wall shoot when I won a second time in a mm -hmm. row. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And, and, and then it keeps on growing. Then I won the next one, and then and, and it won the next one. But the, I think the really break, it's when I switched the vision. So in 2014, the world shoot was in uh, production. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a long run career in open division. They would say, okay, the guys is one, is good. Yeah. Plus mine is famous. Uh, but then I went to production and I won production, the first, my first title in production. And then the people say, damn, that guys know how to shoot not only race guns. Yeah. They yeah. just know how to shoot a pistol. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that really, I think that that was the breaker to, to really start to be famous. Okay, so, so it's a combination of the hard work and also the luck, obviously. Yeah, probably. As, long, as I see. Yeah, it's a long run. Uh, but we, was, we were wondering, what would, uh, what would you do if not shooting? Uh -huh. uh, because, you know, if, uh, imagine if, if the parents wouldn't be supportive and, or open to the, to the shooting career. It's like, no, you, you got to do the, like a master degree in, in engineering or something. So you will see there's a strategy in, in everything. There was a plan B, maybe. Um, <laughs> well, kind of a plan B. Um, in school, I'm not super fan of work. As today, I love to work. But before, I was not in super mood to work. And uh, I choose to make my graduation on two disciplines. Mathematics and science. Mm -hmm. All the rest is like, screw that. I'm not interested. Okay. So... History, French, philosophy, I had absolutely no interest. So I was doing just a very, very strict minimum to get the very, very minimal, minimalist note, not to be DQ'd, actually. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we are scored on 20 points uh, in France, usually, and the minimum score not to be DQ is five. Okay. So that was the target, to hit the five <laughs> minimum. So, you don't, so with the five, you don't get the average, you don't pass. You just pass the However, exam. However with my math so I had so we have some um, uh, how do you say uh, uh, factors on the, on, on the different disciplines and for example eight and, and science were factor uh, 10 and 9 so 10 times the note so 8 times the note or 9 times the notes against French philosophy they were only 4 or 5 because I choose the science uh, division so I, I positioned myself on those two uh, disciplines and remove the and rest and I managed to do an average around 12 yeah. out of 20 which you, was good enough nice it, it is it is fun to hear that you are uh, speaking about the education like it was sport yeah exactly it was, it, it, it it was know, a tactic how many points you want to get <laughs> that was a clear tactic <laughs> oh so man I worked those it's in you <laughs> mathematics I got a 16 out of 20 which is fairly good uh -huh. and uh, science I should have gone a 20 so like an A uh, I just fucked up Uh, on the numbers, so all the all the theory uh, the theory was perfect uh, because I got a copy on this one, mm -hmm. and I just uh, messed up a number, the actually the dot of the number. Ah. So I was supposed to put like I don't know 10.6, and I wrote six uh, 106.0. Right. And then the whole math and all numbers were wrong when the theory was good. So I, I ended up with a 19 out of 20. Uh, and and I remember because my, my teacher has for the copy of it because uh, they knew that I was good on that, and uh, and and the guy who, who actually uh, corrected the copy said, "Too sad. That was a perfect job." Nice. And then just for that, so yeah. I got 19 out of 20, and I was damn it, ah, that hurts. But yeah, yeah so the, I had a tactic plan for that, and if shooting was not a goal, I would have probably gone on onto some science stuff, whatever. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I love science because it's mm -hmm. experiment. Mm -hmm. So I would say oh. you give it a try, you try this, try that. Uh, yeah. It makes perfect sense for you. Because yeah. now I really see that you can like cast the, the mathematic and the science into the shooting. And now it makes perfect sense for me because there is a lot of counting in your head during the stage and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I'm surprised now. So uh, with the next question would be... What's your biggest hobby aside from shooting? <laughs> so what do you do in your free time if you don't shoot? Is it gardening? <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> I almost screwed up myself once uh, with gardening. 
uh, doing some uh, tree cutting. Um, my wife uh, and daughter they do horse riding, so we have few horses, and we had a storm. So the oh, tree okay. uh, they, we had a bad uh, bad storm. The tree fell down into the horse land, so I had to go and cut. So uh -huh. mm. I almost cut myself with the chainsaw. So that was a bad experience. So gardening is absolutely <laughs> not for me. <laughs> no go. Okay. No, it's a no go. Uh, me and my son we do windsurfing. And it's, uh, oh, because nice. you're living by the seaside yes. or the ocean side, Exactly. Right? We're oh, about okay. 20 minutes away uh, from where I live. Kimper is uh, really on the west coast of, of the country. So we are on the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And uh, we are 20 minutes away. And it's... I, I, basically, I would say I love sailing. It's, it's a good mind breaker. Uh, windsurfing is... Well, kite surfing could be also, but windsurfing is you're by yourself alone. So you fight against... The element, against the nature, the wind, the and waves, the sea, and yourself. Uh, and yourself, the board, your equipment, and so on. So it's it's a oh. good it's a good breaker for that. So there is speed techniques and so on. Adrenaline, and, yeah, I see that. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So you're very active. I was expecting something like I'm to calm down and reading a book in a like big leather that, this, yeah. chair. No, no, I'm no. disappointed <laughs> you, are, you are not a fan of gardening. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe well, just counting something for fun, you know? <laughs> well, recently I said on the, uh, I mean, if... On, on another podcast we did, I mean, actually a live we did with the uh, 511 guys uh, and actually Cisal, uh from, from working in, in Europe here. Uh, she was asking, hey, if you, if you were not doing uh, shooting at a high level, what other sport at high level would you do? And I love Formula One. I see so much connection in our sport yeah. uh, with Formula One. And uh, I don't know true. if you guys watch the uh, Netflix series. Oh, of course. Yes. Which I yes, love yes, it, yes, which yes, all yes. the drama from the inside, outside. Oh, yeah. And I feel that I, in my experience, in what I'm living uh, as a pro shooter, I, I feel that I, I feel some connection. I mean, connection between the drivers, what they live to what I live uh, when, ha you know, the shit storm happened you have some issues with your mechanic you have you need to fix and you need sometimes emergency fix sometimes it's a long term Absolutely. fix because Improvise. you realize you realize that uh, uh, we need some improvement on the material and the yeah. equipment and so on so yeah. and there is a lot of connection into yeah. this and it's uh, yeah there's that yeah, adapt, we, improvise, overcome. Yep. It's yeah, actually e exactly what we were talking about, that we see it the same way, like Formula One. But Formula One is way more popular, so we need to bring the IPSC shooting exactly. like, yeah, to the TV, to everyone If just there. a shooting sport, not only IPSC. Oh, of course. I, uh, but yeah. so I would beautiful. say if we can bring just the shooting sport a little bit more on TV, so we have a little bit more recognition and people see... Uh, what's happening in shooting the shooting is always like oh okay they're using gun and uh, I know we speak about the academy a little bit later on but um, the academy that we're using now it's a great tool for marketing and it's a great tool to actually introduce people to the shooting we, we got a lot of women to come and they are curious about oh what's shooting what what does it mean to handle a gun they just want to try and then they realize wow that's pretty cool I, I actually like it I'd, I'd like to come more and, and, and shoot some more and you realize that, yeah, you put everything into the right conditions, yeah. people like shooting. Yeah. yeah. People are scared of uh, firearms because they don't know how to handle them. They've never seen them. They, it's not like part of a general knowledge. With a driving a car, almost everybody drives a car. That's true. So you can or somehow imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can somehow imagine being driving a uh, Formula One. Yeah. So yeah, that's more relatable. That's probably the issue yeah, in here. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there was a there was a biggest hobby aside of shooting, <laughs> and then we we got another one, which is how many guns do you have in your collection? Haha, <laughs> not so much, but because um, the thing is, let's say in in personal the the the, the French law is quite limited. Uh, today, by the law, we are allowed to have twelve firearms under your name. Mm. So for me, twelve firearms, you can guess, it's not that much. Knowing that I need the trainings, I need the uh, the match guns for traveling, and since I shoot multiple division for IPSC today, I need every time like uh, pairs, pairs here, pairs there, yeah. and uh, you know, Lucas plus the PCC and yep. so on. So I'm, yep. I'm I'm already stuck with just the uh, match guns basically. Um, but since uh, 2010, uh, I got now my gun store, and uh, so the gun store have pretty much advanced all my guns in standby so when I need to replace a gun or everything oh. so I got of course indirectly more guns right. access uh, 
but Sebastian is the one actually building my gun. So all, all my match guns are under my name and then all the trainings and stuff uh, are usually staying uh, or on Sebastian name or they go on the, on the, on the gun store name. So we have yeah. Yeah. the access to the equipment. Because that makes it easier. For, it yeah, I got lucky for that. No exceptions for champions, even in France. No, we can't. <laughs> I mean, I tried. I tried and they do understand. And I must say, the administration is extremely supportive. So in the oh. sense that when we need to replace the gun, when we need to change the license, they are doing like bam, 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 super quick because they know that it's my job and it's the career which oh, is involved. That's and nice of them. So it's it's great. But there's no access to extra guns because uh, it's your job or uh, you're, you're yeah. world champion. No, you stick to the rule. It's 12 guns. You do whatever you want within the 12. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask also uh, with this question, is there any gun you, you like have personal connection that that is really like valuable to you that you know that you will keep for the rest of your life well or do you use it as a tool one, there, well I use mostly them as a tool I'm not too much attached because uh, I'm pre- pretty much uh, a gun breaker yeah. so that means I am not too much attached but ha- now in the CZ uh, the group become a, a cold CZ group and my very first gun Uh, it's actually funny, but I would like to, to to get it back or find it the same one. Was actually a Colt officer. Mm-hmm. So Colt officer, oh. if you if you know what it is, it's a 1911, of course, three inch barrel, uh, six rounds magazine, four, caliber 45. So I was like 10, 11 years old. I it's was like shooting that gun. Carry gun. It's it's a concealed carry gun. But when you're 10 or 11, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> the gun that you can have in your hands by you. by the size. Yeah, I get you. And uh, of course, uh, in my career, for money reason and so on, so we s- we sold it along the way. Um, now being part of CZ and uh, and and Colt now being there, I've I've, has, I, I've begged the guys from Colt guys if you can find me one a one Colt officer so I can you know have my starting gun, and the day I finish I have my handing gun. In between, what happened happened. Yeah, yeah. But if I can have those two. Well, I'm not finished, so we'll, we'll see which one will be the last one to be used. Yeah. If I shoot uh, a Shadow 2, a, a tactical sport, and, uh, or some open gun, we don't know yet. But if I can have the first and the last, that for me, that would be a great present yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day. That's also, a great idea. Also But for the family history. And, yeah. And, yeah. I can imagine it's going to be in a, in a, like a glass, you know, uh, Something like a that. vault in the Eric Graufle Academy. Just, yeah. just it, light it up perhaps like just, first and yeah, last. Perhaps your uh, family hall of fame or My, personal yeah, of, yeah, yeah. hall of fame. Could be, like could be, could yeah. be. It's just, you know, for the history, saying yeah. that you went all along the way from 92, you started here with that and you, I don't know, 20s or 2040s maybe yeah. who knows you ended up with that I'm, I'm just realizing how great your career is I was born in 92 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was already shooting by then can yeah. you imagine nice actually my first nationals eh oh 92 yeah, yeah. I'm just overwhelmed uh, you have uh, mentioned the Sebastian mm-hmm. uh, friend of yours colleague of yours yep. you name it yep I was always curious what was the um, your first meeting or what what's the re- relationship uh, basically because he's a very you know smiling supportive guy. Uh, every time I met him, he's like easy to go, eh? cheer, cheering up. Yeah, oh, he's a great man. Yeah, he's I great. Saw him for, I saw him for the first time here actually. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So first time you really talk with him and so on. Yes. Right. So I'll yeah. give you a little bit of history. So Seb started uh, arrived actually in the region around. 2008 if I'm not mistaken maybe two ta- early 2009 uh, out from the army uh, it was uh, within so French army but also some UN uh, deployments oh, uh, okay. he arrived uh, into the region and uh, started looking for a job and of course as uh, he was actually a sniper in the uh, in the uh, in the army really yeah that was his job Oh my god okay so i mean support sniper in i mean un didn't they didn't didn't go to real war in the sense of they were here for protection and so on so he never had to to go on a on the big bad fights but so his job was that so he comes of course to my region and he wants to shoot he loves guns so he ended up in my club actually 
and um, come to the club and he, he saw us like bing bang 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 he's like what oh, damn that looks <laughs> it was cool. happening already yeah. yeah it was already <laughs> shooting and so on and I, yeah. I think he said that I was coming back so 2008 basically because I was coming back from a world shoot mm -hmm. and he's like wow that looks pretty cool shooting I, I want to do that so he started he joined the group and he, he started IPSC and we are same age we got only four months difference okay so we got along we started to be friends and stuff and uh, he, he had some job and in 20 end of 2012 uh, something like this I think is the company was working for it closed or something like that so he was looking at some options to work and I said man don't you want to we try to work together and we try to open up something and uh, and we keep on moving my company is already running so mm -hmm. why not trying to get the company uh, becoming a gun store uh, potentially we can sell guns and so on and, and we'll see where it leads yeah. us yeah so we start working together uh, he come with me at the European in Portugal 2013 uh, things happened and he was there in Florida 2014 but the company was already pretty much growing quick mm -hmm. I then uh, he specialized himself in uh, building me the gun you know for me uh, when okay. I was before doing it myself uh, when I had the time and uh, and then he become more and more so he, he got education he got trained uh, uh, to become a to become a, an armorer, gunsmith, uh, and bit by bit it become my uh, my coach on the big events, my armorer uh, all year long. So he's taking care of all my guns. He knows you're, what you're I do. Right he, hand. he knows yeah. is yeah, it's actually actually right arm, right brain, right right everything. So and he does everything. He knows how I like the gun. So when when I get a new gun. Uh, basically, take the gun, strip it out, fit the way uh, he wants it to be fit. He knows my trigger setup, so I don't have to think. Aww. The gun comes in, it's ready to go. Okay. I go and shoot. That's tremendous so I just, help. So then I do the, that. I just have to do the so job. I don't have to think. Makes it very friendly and yeah, there exactly. You, there you go. <laughs> well, you know my. Spe I know. I won't say my specs. My specs are not like super, super thing. But the one of the things that I like compared to most of the people, I like a lot pre-travel on my trigger. Okay. Uh, a lot of people, they like short reset or, or short pre-travel. I like it long. I like to have some weight. And basically, it's the weight distribution on my trigger that uh, it's the most complicated to set. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. rest, I don't really care if it's this hammer, this, that hammer, that recoil okay. spring. It doesn't really matter much. But what I feel on my trigger is... Uh, what you care about. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so he knows the whole thing. And he knows the whole story. And when it comes to the world shoot, it's part of the success. Because he's the one that make sure that the gun is ready he's the one also uh, I can speak to but all, he's also the one uh, who can he can come and tell me hey dude you're screwing it up right now you're not in your game so pull yourself together and go to the work so and that's that's also something yeah. you know uh, a lot of people don't see or can't imagine that there is a relation there that yeah. he has all the rights to tell me yeah. anything at that moment because we are here for a week and there's there's no ease in the boat so if 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 i go wrong he will indirectly suffer suffer from the result but indirectly it suffer also our own business at the end of the day no doubt so yeah he's the one that can make the decision and say now time to push now time to back off and we have to we, yeah. We can discuss that, or he can say, hey, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Or, yeah, that's good, but sh slow down. So he does the uncomfortable talks. and uh, Because, you know, sometimes you, you don't want to hear something, but, you know, that's, it's that relationship that he's that honest and, uh, and so close to you that, uh, you know, it's that relationship. I, I would say some people take it personal. I, t I don't take it personal. If it's wrong, it's wrong, because the only thing is the final result that matters. Yeah, absolutely. So that was my for, idea. For, for that moment, yeah, it is, helps. That, is that the uncomfortable word he's using? Absolutely not. Because the final goal is in few days for that score, for that yeah. result. So yeah. Yeah. If, you can, if you can't accept that or if you can't handle it, then you're in the, you're in the wrong position. You're, you're yeah. not supposed to be the driver at that yeah. point then. Yeah. And ju just uh, you talking about uh, all this that 
people rely on you. It's a bad result would be bad for him, for, for your shop. I can feel the pressure. <laughs> I can feel the pressure already right now. It must be tremendous pressure. But it's pressure for everyone, everyone else. Look, imagine CZ signed me up uh, end of, I was at 20, we signed up 2018. And COVID came in, yeah. right? In between. So think that they signed me when I've won pretty much everything already and I'm getting older. So there's no secret about that. Like everyone gets older. Yeah, of course. Can I still win? Who knows? Ask yourself. Who knows? It can happen that I fail right away. And I fell from coming from a company, moving to another one. Not that good. Now... We're coming to the uh, 2022, we've been there, we had the 2019 European Championship, COVID comes in, everything gets delayed, 2022, so we have a five years between the two world shoots. And we're coming to a position of, all right, now it's time to deliver. So we, 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 we are in the strategy point of view. So during the season, I'm working with uh, Jakub and we're like, okay, and that's, uh, think about the analogy to Formula One. And we're like, all right, Cuba, we got one thing here. We got this young boy, Khalil. He's there. We know he should standard. Uh, we sign him up now. We need this guy right now. So Cuba take the decision. Okay, we take him in. And he says, Eric, but you're going to shoot standard. I said, no, I'm not shooting standard. This guy can win. He doesn't need me. He can win. Think about if he wins and I put myself in another division, and our, today, Shadow 2 is the most popular, let's say, sport gun in the CZ uh, company. We haven't had the title uh, for years. The, uh, the, the last title you had, it was with Adam Titz. Yes. By the time, we got two times the, uh, two times the title of world champion production, but the, during that period of time, there's a, there's, a, there's a gap. So it's time to take it back. So... He says yes, but that we we are we are we are taking a huge risk. I said, well, you know, sport is about risk. You need <laughs> yeah. to decide yeah. and press the button. But if we take the the statistics, statistics is on our side. It doesn't mean it's on our side that it's guaranteed. Of course, mm -hmm. but it's on our side. So we went there, and I can tell you. So Seb Seb knows he's been there already on several wall shoot with me, so he knows the drill. But Kuba, you could see you, you you haven't seen him on the backstage. He was stressed the whole damn week, waking up at night, shaking at night. What's happening? What score? Exactly. It was crazy that the the, the the group itself start to stress. Yeah. And now when you come back uh, home, you come back, uh, you, you you bring back what happened uh, to to the company. You can see the diff. I mean, you can see the people are concerned. The whole company, the company of CZ, is big. It's it's thousands of people, employees. But they start to be concerned. They start to be concerned because we have we brought back as many medals that we never had. Lubisha got the title, yeah. so right. Yeah. Uh, Camelia, new si ni new shooter that we have in the team, uh, ladies production. She got a title. So yeah. we brought nine medals in a one single run because we did the right decision of taking the right people in our group on board on yeah. board yeah so it's that's that's the good that that's the fun but it's it's stress it's a lot yeah. of stress it's in the decision making it must be yeah. a lot of stress i, I cannot imagine Absolutely. the the pressure on you but it's fun yeah it, it is it looks it like is. he has no pressure on him <laughs> yeah, well, have, you, have you ever been have you ever seen eric stressed uh, not really. He's he's relaxed <laughs> all day long, man. Yeah. yeah, but that's you. Yeah, that's the facade. You need yeah, you need that facade course. for the people. Ah, but it, you get you. the stress on the inside. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, that's that's happening no matter what. Absolutely. So how do you sleep during the world shoot or before the world shoot? I sleep quite well. Actually. Yeah, you sleep well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got I got used to I it. I know. Yeah, I know how to get the break, but the hand the head is spinning. So that means as soon as I feel I go to sleep, I go to sleep. I sleep what I have to sleep. Then sometimes I wake up an hour too early or two hours too early and the head is like bam, 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 bam. And, you know, last world shoot, I was like, man, what? you know, why, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you putting yourself again on the line? What for? Do you need that? So, you okay. know, all these stupid questions that's like, is that really necessary? What? And, and 
what if? Mm -hmm. What if you lose? What if you come second place? What if you get DQ'd? What if That's so possible. this everything yeah, is everything, possible. Yeah, everything yeah. can happen. You know, DQ'd could be you just fall or your you gun never know. your gun falls from uh, from a loaded table because you hit the table by mistake and yeah. so on and it falls down on the ground. You don't you didn't do uh, something really wrong yep. somehow, but yep. the gun falling down, it's a DQ. Yeah. Lack of luck. So there's so many things that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah. You, sh you should be a life coach. I was, I was <laughs> talking. Maybe I was asking, actually you are. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Khalil yesterday, and I was like, so we had like a like a chat uh, behind the desk, and I was like, hey man, uh, we we did a podcast together uh, back in the day in, in the Philippines. And I was you like, can find it in, <laughs> yeah, in in, in uh, the link below. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, man, I, I don't want to steal from you, but everyone says that um, the fight against the stress um, or against the pressure is like everyone says, stay in the present. I was like, it's nice to say, but the execution is a lot harder because uh, at the moment um, it's, it's hard to just describe, but uh, you are just there and you know that you have trained, blah, blah, blah. You, you are trying to prepare, but you want a you wanna performance. You, you want that, uh, that podium, right? That's right. And then how it all gets together and, and it sits on you and it's like, stay in the present. It's, it's like... Okay, it's it's nice to nice to be said, but then the execution that's the real that's the real uh, pain to kind of separate uh, and also to make a funnel for the, for the for the ideas and for the execution of the performance. That's true. Uh, so I was just I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, I'm I'm not sure if I want to hear from you. What's what's it like? Because I know it's not simple. It's not. Uh, Like a, it's a complex, it's it's a complex um, of of multiple applications, and every everyone does it a little bit different. Uh, but what's what's kind of your your perspective on that? My approach for that? Yeah, yeah, because it's I know it's so complex. No, there's there's a, there's a strategy. There's a strategy. You just say like fuck it, or no, no, absolutely not. It's there's a strategy. My my. And, and I think it's a proven strategy. It's the only thing is a lot of people don't want to play that game because that game, uh, you know exactly where you stand and you know if you lose or if you're going to win. And uh -huh. a lot of people, they just don't want to handle that. They just want to, no, I'm doing, I'm doing what I can and we'll see. Yep. Yeah, well, the we'll see is not really an option uh, because <laughs> if you try to, to perform your best all the time, uh, it's not going to work. Consistency. Yes, uh, however, you can build the consistency of, you can become consistent working on mistakes of others. In the sense that, oh. do I need to deliver my best to win? Maybe yes, maybe no. Mm -hmm. Do I need to deliver the strict minimum based on results of others in order to oh, win? The, gr the grace from history. Exactly, <laughs> I, I see the parallel <laughs> with the graduation. So... The question that so will the people remember you because you shot the best performance ever? No, because nobody will look at your statistics, yeah, nobody will read them, not and very few of them might have an understanding of it. But people will remember if you win or if you lose. So, at the end True. of the day, do I need to shoot at 100% of my capacity to win? Maybe one day, but as it is today, no. What I need to do is just to win by one point every single stage over my competition and bit by bit create the lead. Mm -hmm. Is And sometime if your competitor make a mistake, I don't know, makes extra shots or extra time or uh, make a miss, question is, are you going to hammer it down and try to make a statement And make a mistake yourself. So making a statement meaning that you're pushing and opening the gas just to hammer it down. And what if you make a mistake? Are you making a statement? No. <laughs> you're, you're screwing it up, actually. Yeah. But wouldn't be a, a decent strategy to say, okay, you, this guy just lost 15 points. So I'm going to play secure and not win the 15 points, but win 12, 10 or 12 points. And you uh. secure 10 or 12 points in your pocket. And you keep on going. You just, you didn't make the 15 but you have 10 or 12. 
very analytical that's approach. I love it. Mathematic guy. I think you can learn from that. Yeah, but that's, that was the same. <laughs> Everyone. That was my the same the same thing when it comes to graduation yes. from me at school. Exactly. The math was there. I said <laughs> philosophy, French history, it's not it's a no go. However, math and science are a go. So let's let's work on those so I don't have to deal with these. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would want to jump to another question and that's pretty easy. How's your normal day? What's the normal day of Eric Grofo? As it is today? No, no, not today. <laughs> normal, <laughs> normal day I mean, in France. As like, it is on the no, uh, on, on the day now, it's it sucks. Uh, it's early <laughs> wake up. Uh, How ve- early? Uh, depends between five to five thirty. Whoa! Ooh. Yeah, that hurts. Go to go. To, I go usually to the kitchen with my laptop, do my breakfast and laptop things. So everyone else is asleep still. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do all my emails, answers as much as I can there and so on. Just make it done. Yeah. And then move on. Bring the kids to school by eight, then head to uh, head to the office. Uh, I do some more paperwork there. So let's say until 10, 10, 10 30. Uh, then I hit to the gym. The gym we have now and on spot. So I got my mm-hmm. own room. And my team trains with me from time to time. So for an hour and a half, and usually this is the time I got my meetings uh, with the factory. So either I'm on the treadmill or on the elliptical, so they they know. Oh, Eric, you are working again? Yes, of I course. Don't worry. Know, like yeah, so. I noticed that. So doing this uh, this uh, this thing, so I do a lot of cardio. Efficiency. Uh, uh, mm. And then and that's about the time I make all the calls. Also, beside the meetings, if I don't have, I make all the calls because it's okay. it's fairly simple. I have nothing to do, so yeah. it, it spend my time pretty easy. And you're working out. And you're working out. Yeah. Uh, get to get to twelve twelve thirty. Go to lunch. Do some more, uh, so no breaks. Do my lunch after the lunch is done. Go back to work. So the lunch lasts fifteen twenty minutes, sometimes just five. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, do uh, do some more paperwork. Go to the shooting range. Shoot um, 300, 500 rounds. It takes me thirty to forty five minutes. And then go back to work. Head home maybe seven p.m. if mm-hmm. I'm lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, cook the dinner for the family and so on. And uh, you cook for the family. Yeah, usually I cook for the family. Oh, that's nice of you. Uh, and uh, do some debriefing with my wife. Everything's gone with the kids and so on. And then usually I don't do much in the evening. Just uh, we watch TVs or you know, just relax. Stuff. Yeah, just, just relax, relax yeah. in the evening. And yeah. I sleep quite early, around nine thirty, ten. Done. Yeah. You are so busy during your day, and that's why I need a CZ energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> you need to open it when you say that. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Uh, but that answers all partially the other question we have here, and that's what keeps you in shape. So you do a lot of cardio, you said yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. that then um, hard rate, wind, hard rate, wind hard rate also. Hard rate yes. control. So yeah. it's like, uh, all right, let's check it out. What is that now? You calm now? Uh, 50. <laughs> yeah, it 50 was 50 like beats per minute. I was down to uh, 52. Now we're talking and moving. I'm 65. Yeah. All right. Having less than 50 is actually a risk, right? It's too low. No, it's. I think it's under 40. Under 40? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because I'm, I'm usually 42, 43, 44 when I'm in the sofa watching TV. Yeah. D- do you see yourself that you are in the best athletic sh- shape of your life? Absolutely not. But my wife says I'm sexy, so I would say <laughs> she's happy with that right now. Yeah, man, nice. I felt so sad for you, or so bad for you. I was I was listening to one of your podcasts back in the day, probably years ago, and there was a guy who was asking you uh, about you know performance, blah blah blah, and you said that your wife kind of gave you a um, uh, the finger or, or like um, ultimatum oh, ultimatum thank you for that uh, <laughs> I, the, I know where you're leading <laughs> yeah yeah and I was and the guy was laughing the the moderator of the podcast was, was laughing like hey, hey, hey and you've been like dead serious and it's like just say the ultimatum this, what was this it this is not funny no, you don't want to know <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not sure if, if I'm supposed to um, finish it you say you say I respect it yeah well you know it's like uh, it was uh, w- for the world shoot 2017 and we were uh, back in the t- end of 2016 and she's like man dude you're big and fat you need to do something out of it and uh, I said yeah yeah okay I- I'll work on it and nothing happened for months month and a half keep doing my thing and she's like 
man, Eric. And she called me Richie. She's like, Richie, you need to really do something. So let's make a deal. I said, okay, let's make a deal. It's be- but I didn't know what to expect. So yeah. like an idiot, I said, <laughs> Competition. Yeah. Let's so yes, do that. Let's, let's make a deal. <laughs> like an idiot. And uh, she's like, ah, you know what? Uh, until you drop uh, under the uh, 90 kilos or 85, so you, I need to drop 10 kilos, basically. Uh, there's no more sex. It's like, no, 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 no. That's, <laughs> hey, you said we're making the deal. That's a deal. And I'm, Damn it. So, hey, I lost those 10 kilos. Super fast. Super fast. They're yeah. very, very s- extremely efficient. And yeah. then I got launched. I mean, I got started. So, And yeah. uh, I yeah. used to, basically what happened is, uh, before we got the kids, uh, I used to work out a lot by the time and and then got the kids and then I stopped working out I I, I started eating you know the, the the nights were long and so on so on mm-hmm. and, I, and I kept like this and I was uh, okay that's easy and so on that not not too complicated to do anything but I got big and fat and that was that was terrible uh, that was terrible for the for the for the life being that was terrible for the athletic part I got you know tired pretty easy yeah um, and then we started again, and uh, and then uh, now she's like, uh, yeah, but you're doing too much workout. Yeah, but I need. Now I'm in. I'm, I'm back hooked up to it. So yeah. if I'm not going, like addicted. Uh, yeah, addicted. In, if I'm not going, the guys at the at the company, they're like, man, you didn't go to the gym today. Yep, nope. That you guys can feel it because uh, it's it's my way to get the relieved and the stress out. So oh, yeah. I can, you know. Oh yeah. yes. When I go back, then I'm fresh in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I don't go, it's like everything that you know bothers me. Somebody gets the hit easily. Mm-hmm. I get you. Yeah, I just cl- clearly remember uh, the laughing of the of the moderator, and you've been like dead serious. You, you've been like, "Oh, well, it's working well, eh? You know, it, you, that's not e- fun. E- everyone can try that. It's I, I was I was like, motivation. I feel with the guy. I totally feel with the guy. And um, but you did it, and we see the progress. Yep. Uh, I appreciate that uh, you are able to adapt in, in such a way, and you are, you know, perfectly uh, athletic now. Even in my um, opinion, or I, I, I mean, in my opinion, and we see the progress. We did some research yesterday, as we've been preparing for the podcast, and and, and Carl just opened up the Google, and uh, we've seen <laughs> some some older pictures of, of yours. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, there's a great progress. No yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> There's 25 kilos difference. It's about 25 percent. 25. Wow. I, I I ended up. I didn't break the 100, mm-hmm. but I was at 99 point something. Okay. Pretty close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so. But it happens, man. It happens. Yeah. I don't judge. Yeah. I don't judge. Yeah. That leads me to another question. Uh, so we are talking about your your body and the body shape. People say you don't blink. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, a lot of people I, say that. I remember. Did I, I blink during the the podcast right now? Or I don't know. A couple times. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't counting, but it was like I, ten. I, not enough. <laughs> I saw you blink yesterday. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> I don't blink much, and that's also one of the reasons my eyes sometimes gets uh, like red or stuff because okay. I don't clean them up enough. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't blink. So, and usually people they say that I I, I got a, a a look when I look to the people they get a little bit kind of uh, disturbed confused, confused because yeah. I'm like yeah dead on sp- I'm, I'm dead on spotting on <laughs> exactly. I, I told you a few I years ago yeah. I wasn't that good in English ba- back in the day uh, but I was like yeah Eric there's something wild with, with your eyes you look, you, you look a little bit wild yeah I wasn't able to express that myself pro- properly but uh, then we had like random chats with, with the dudes you know in random places and I'm like yeah he's wild he doesn't blink yeah. what's like what's the what pills does he take or yeah. is it like a, like a <laughs> box guys who just cut the the, uh, the skin yeah, out, yeah. out of the you know over here i don't know how to express it properly but uh, is it like a purposefully done or what's what's the secret behind no, because I, there is so many question marks once you are the champion once you are what you do and blah blah, blah there are questions and people are wondering and like What's the key to success? What what well, does stop he do? blinking? Yeah. Eric Raufel doesn't blink. He must if be on be drugs. Champion. Or <laughs> that that'll be funny actually to to tape to see if I blink during a run. I'm actually curious about that. Man, I saw your video, the ad- the advertisement or the presentation video for the TS2. Mm-hmm. Not a single blink. And there, there were, we had a comments below the video like 
I was watching properly the whole time and the guy doesn't blink. <laughs> <laughs> You're losing time blinking. Just, just don't do it. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, yeah, it could be potentially if you're aiming, yeah. you, know, exactly. you know, you know, you lose the focus and then exactly for whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but no, th no, there's a sign during the recoil actually. But it's <laughs> it's it's a known fact, but I, I, I absolutely do not realize that. And it's and that's okay. And I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. It's Apparently something you do naturally. It, yeah, it might be some natural focus. Could be or so, or something. Could be. Yeah. Could be. We all have something. Yeah. You know, you never know. Uh, we wanted to ask you about the EGCZ Academy. Oh yeah, it has been mentioned multiple times. Sorry, Carl, if if I still no, that's fine. If, if I'm stealing the questions from, no, you're sorry not. Sorry for that, man. Uh, but the EGCZ Academy is the big thing now. Uh, we saw just a couple of pictures, some videos, some mm -hmm. promotional materials, blah blah blah. How does it look like? How how does it feel? No, 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 no. So First, I would okay. I would start how it was created in your head. So let's oh. <laughs> let's reverse as it is now. Okay. Let me ask you the question from whatever you've seen and you know what you guys think about it, so that people understand before I get to tell you the story of it. Ah. Okay. So we've seen already pictures when it was uh, actually building okay. uh, from the ground. So uh -huh. it looked pretty huge. That was my first impression that, that it okay. looked really big. Okay. Me personally, I, I just seen the potential in Europe for the work class training. Okay. It, and it's indoor. I appreciate so you, you can shoot all day long, no matter the weather and no, no matter the circumstances. Yep. Day and night. Uh, I don't know what's what's behind the, the licenses, but if you are approved by the government and the state and mm -hmm. the city, blah blah blah. Yep. Uh, so I, I saw the huge potential, uh, but I was wondering: is it like a, uh, is, is there any accommodation, or is is there just a shooting range, or just office and a shooting range? Because you know, I'm just a normal guy. I'm just a normal dude, so I don't know what's the what was the budget, what what's the what was the real purpose? Was it shooting range just for you, and just for VIP, and and so. I was just wondering and I saw the pictures so I, I was expecting like yeah they have like few kind of um, uh, base internally so, some some of them I was, it made sense so I, I saw that yeah this one is probably commercial for like uh, you know new people to the mm -hmm. to the business and then there must be some bay for Eric to, to be able to train in and take the, the customers and th take the friends and you know buddies uh, to shooting and then probably something extra it's always the addition is always great and i'm not sure if there is a bar or if there's accommodation because it all gets together because mm -hmm. it's, it's in france we already yeah. discussed that and so if if someone's coming they they need the accommodation or or, or if if it was a part of the deal or, so i didn't know mm -hmm. so i was just wondering at, but it's brand new it looks awesome it's super modern and it will bring it brought a lot of attention already so people are in the community people are talking about it exactly like, yeah, i saw eric and and i I'm, i'm saving my money to get there man and um so yeah one of the dudes it's it's uh i wanted to continue but you said it well <laughs> <laughs> sorry basically sorry, it was man. a little bit the idea of the whole thing um the first thing is in uh 2016 my range get closed got closed So the, oh, okay. the, the, the public range we had got closed for uh, noise pollution and then ground pollution to oh. solve and so on and so on. So no more range. And that for years. So we were like, ah, we need to find a solution. We need to, 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 to do something. Can we, can we find a place outdoor? I found some clubs uh, nearby, but it was complicated to get in. And in the meantime, my store, we, we moved to that uh, to that building we bought in the industrial zone from the town and and in the meantime i bought another piece of land which was behind and come the fact that damn that land is pretty long it was a rectangle thing but it i had like almost 80 somewhere about 80 meters long piece of land and i'm like this possibility that we can do something in there so shooting outdoor it's impossible it's dead already mm -hmm. so can we build a building can we fit a building in that space so we start doing the research uh, and looking at options uh, during and then um, when when we met with CZ there were there was that that thing to do all right uh, I need also a shooting range for me to practice that's one thing 
Uh, but also we were saying that in Europe, as it turns now, with the regulations, uh, the factory produce guns. Fine. We sell guns. So far, so good. But what if there is no more place to use those guns? Factory doesn't exist anymore. So the deal was to, to like start looking at being able to produce a shooting range, a facility that is replicable to any other place, at least in Europe, and why not outside Europe in the future, so that we can offer solutions uh, for sport shooting or hobby, mm -hmm. let's say. And, uh, and it started like this. We want to promote safety, of course, and gun handling. We want to bring in uh, new people to the community. Yeah. Do, uh, do the politics. To the politics, of yeah. course. We want to do, and the Academy is a great tool for that. We, we are using it as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. So today the Academy is part of the marketing assets of, uh, of the CZ group in the sense that we do promotion with it. We do, so you've seen we did the last uh, filming for the TS2 Orange in the Academy. Yeah. Uh, we got all the plans already to do some more filmings at the Academy for the group for presenting the firearms and so on. Of course, me, I can train, as you mentioned. So it's that was part of this. Uh, that I have the, the range on the spot. So um, what they like in my idea, it's like, I brought my, my uh, fitness gym center on the spot where I work. Now we bring the shooting range on where I work so I can lose a minimum amount of time and be as much as efficient as I can to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do the teaching uh, in there. I got my instructors inside also who are doing some teachings. Uh, we got a club so people can actually become club members of the facility. Of course. We need to pay the facility. Just marketing won't pay for it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So we need we need the people that comes in. So it allows the people to rent guns, to yeah. to test guns. You need a traffic. Uh, so exactly. We we got the ammunition storage so they can shoot. Uh, and as I said, we we are now uh, using the academy as a great tool. Some of the meetings, some of the customers, they come over. Uh, where they come to the academy, we take care of them, we bring them into the academy, we make them shoot the firearms of the CZ so they can test it live. We have the meeting room so the, the sales team can have the meetings and meet the people and have a talk and so on and so on. So it, it, it's, it's becoming part of, uh, yeah, as I said, the CZ assets within the group. Yes, it's in France uh, and it's not in Czech for the time being, but the, the, the idea was to also, we believe that France is probably one of the stricter uh, country when it comes to social and, and worker yep. uh, regulations. So we wanted to make sure that if we pass France, most likely we'll pass anywhere in the rest of mm -hmm. Europe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So there is a plan to build more of them? Probably, yes. Okay. Now it's bit so we of course we took some we got delayed. Let's be clear, COVID got got there. We were about to press the button of construction uh, about a week or two weeks before COVID starts. So and oh. we got lucky. We 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 managed to put the brake on it. Stand by. Of course, they, we got the inflation. We got hit by the inflation. We had to reposition a little bit some of the stuff to to stay into the budget. Um, but yes, clearly it's. We believe that the academy is something which is replicable and mm -hmm. uh, that will help the future of shooting sports, at least in Europe, yeah. uh, and then why not in the rest of the world? Because yeah. we are not 100% sure that shooting will remain possible in the long-term future um. on full outdoor. However, if it's a control, uh, in a control space, in a controlled uh, building, we can say, then it's easier to say, yeah, shooting can keep on going and they yeah. I mean absolutely. there is no there is absolutely no yeah. restriction for people to yes. practice and play and yeah. shoot with guns if there, it's in a in a in a yeah. safe control area there's no sounds there's no it's, exactly it's safer. exactly it's yeah. it's for us it's fully controlled automatically controlled with badges access yeah. and so on no ricochet there's no rico blah, blah. no ricochet no sound I've been for for example when I was practicing for the last world shoot in Thailand uh, I, I, I decided to fly in Thailand the very last moment. So what happened is I start shifting my days uh, to the time frame of Thailand way ahead. 
So what I was doing is I was doing the very last two trainings. I was at one o'clock in the morning in the shooting range practicing. See, that's the pro. Wow. <laughs> but one o'clock in the morning is like seven o'clock in the Thailand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So I was there at one o'clock French time practicing. Nobody came in. I, I shot thousand rounds midnight. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. From the outside, yeah. there's boom, absolutely boom, 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 no boom, boom, boom. sound on the outside. Zero. Oh, Zero. Man. You can be on the parking lot. You don't hear a thing. Great. That's so good. So, uh, what am I supposed to do if I want to um, go and shoot in a CZ Academy? If I want to get some sort of training? As it is today, we're still in the full development of the, uh, let's say, platform itself. Uh, now it's fully French, but it's going to turn into English pretty soon now. Uh, the best is just to shoot an email on the uh, info mm -hmm. at agccacademy.com. That's mm -hmm. for now the best option, unless you read French or you have a translator on your on your brother, uh, where you can actually uh, create your account on the academy. When you have your account created, uh, we just need the IDs of the person and so on, so that the account can be verified. Legislation. And exactly. Yeah. When it and then when it's approved, let's say called verified, you get access to the uh, different schedule and then you, then you can start booking whatever you want. You mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, plug in, pay, book your course, come in and so on. And so there are uh, options for multiple different types of courses? Yes. And uh, is there something like if I have my own gun, I would just want to pop in and shoot at my target without being disturbed by anybody or something like that? Yes. There, so we have courses, uh, which most likely is uh, practical shooting courses. Yeah. Uh, but we also have like target uh, courses. Uh, for now, they are most likely orientated to the uh, members of the club mm -hmm. who wants uh, that the training within inside. But you, you, you're not from the club, you want to come in, you, you of course get your registered. When you are registered, then you said, okay, I want to book an hour time from, I don't know, noon to 1 p.m. Uh, in the uh, precision shooting range, so where you can send the targets back and forth. Okay. Um, do you, then it goes, do you need guns, yes or no? Or you have your own gun, so you can click, pass. Do you need ammunition, yes or no? Uh, do I need a target or do you uh, or, or like hair protection, eye protection and so on? Yes, no. We got, you know, free stuff that people can use like hair protection and glasses that are free. Of course, the target, since you shoot, you buy them for, I don't know, 70 cents, the paper target. So mm -hmm. uh, like reasonable price. Yeah. Uh, then you come in uh, about five minutes before your time, you get in. If you're not a club member, we give you a visitor badge so that you can access the shooting room and then you get in make you shooting come out that's it done alrighty how many people can be shooting at one time in the CZ Academy how many customers you can have there uh, or so like technically on the uh, administration paperwork 150 people in the same time in the building uh -huh. uh, reasonably the, um, the the target range is uh, 10 lanes 10 lanes 10 lanes for the sh for the target shooting range the, so nice. one bay then we have the fun shoot bay where you shoot at steel target, plate racks and that. We, we put three people in there. And then we have the uh, three, uh, three bays for the practical shooting. So oh, nice. de depending how many people you get into your course, we usually make a uh, six people course, which is mm -hmm. the convenient. Sometimes I got a group of 10. So if we push to uh, 10 people in those three bays, so you get 30 plus 10, it's another 40. So basically 43 shooters in the same time uh, inside the shooting yeah. range, plus the people, plus so, the instructors, so and so all on. All the base can be used independently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can build a stage while there's someone shooting. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's Hundred percent. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. You're not stopping. So even though you are, on, for example, um, on the uh, precision uh, lines, mm -hmm. you don't have, you don't go to the target. The target comes back yeah. to you. Yeah. So you put the target on on that stand, and then you press the button. The whole thing goes all the way down. You go bang, 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 and there's yeah. no rule. You want to shoot five rounds and bring the target. Good to for you. If you want to shoot 20 rounds before you bring back the target, it's up to you. Yes. Uh, but so pe the people, the 10 people that are on the precision line, uh, they are completely independent. They don't have to wait for someone to finish so they can go to the targets and see their, their score. Yeah, that's so practical. I have one more question. Uh, you probably have tried the proje projection or shooting range. Uh, what do you think about that technology? Do you think it has a, any sort of like future use? When you have a projector, there is, there is a 
situation different going scenes. on. Different scenes. Yeah, you can change the targets. There might be like trainers for hunters, uh, running pig and so on. Have you tried that? I've tried. Uh, they they still have uh, issues it, because in it's the not perfect. It's not perfect enough, and, and, and as this has been existing for at least the last, I would say, at least ten years. I've seen that. So probably. It, it, and I didn't see much of an improvement. You know, mm. the, the issues they have. It's not that accurate when it comes to the shooting. So because you need a camera that detects the bullet that has flown into the into the image at that moment. It, so that means the image, whatever target you have, the target was there, the bullet hit there. Yeah. So you need the return of information. And usually when it's brand new and your, and your background is new, it works well. It works perfect, yeah. But, you know, shooting, the principle of shooting, it's, it's basically destroying. Yes. It destroys, it breaks. It's, it breaks things. And, um, I mean, if your bullet traps is no more as new as it should be, then the thing doesn't yeah. work. You shot, yeah. it doesn't yeah. detect your shot. Yeah. It's a lot a lot of money. It looks very fancy, but at the end of the day, when it doesn't work, the people who are willing to use it, they're going to get pissed. Yeah. And that's nowhere near good. It's it's definitely not a way for you uh, in a way how ma how many rounds you shoot. No. Like you shoot thousands of rounds and that would get destroyed and, very fast. And and I, I shoot thousands of rounds, but the people that are in the club now, uh, and to give you an idea, we opened since six months, we have 40 members in the section of IPSC. So it's about 300 members today in the club of the academy. Mm -hmm. Four feet, 40 of, uh, of them are shooting IPSC. So they have trainings. Uh, we got six trainings a week right now. Oh, nice. In the trainings, we take six people. All right. Mm -hmm. So these six people per training, they shoot 200 rounds. So make the mess. We got six people per training multiplied by six trainings a week, 36. 36 guys a week shoot 200 rounds. It's a lot of bullets. <laughs> per week. <laughs> per week. Yeah. So per week multiplied by four weeks in the months, they give you just an idea of the volume which is shot mm. just by yeah. practical shooters in our room in in the academy yeah you said that the uh, the actual shot the principle of the shot breaks breaks things yeah but it also breaks the body and one of our questions leads uh to the you've shot some rounds quite a bit yes some there are some probably several can, millions can you estimate the number well I'd take a hundred and fifty thousand for the last uh, i would say 20 years You're the math guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's above three million. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so there are some. Do you see any effects on your body after the, all the repetitions? I'm not asking like specifically on the injuries caused by shooting and, and blah, blah, blah. But there is so many repetitions and there is so many punches, specifically by the standard 40 Smith and Wesson uh, guns. Uh, it breaks the, the elbows. I know, the, I know the people who complain, it destroyed my elbow, I have a tennis elbow now, no. I need to switch the division, blah, blah, blah. I don't have tennis elbows at all. Great, great. You know why? Because you exercise? No. Because I shoot 9mm all year long. Okay. I shoot minor all year long. First, first reason, it doesn't break the gun, and it doesn't break the body. Yeah. So, of course, I got some tensions, and uh, one, one of the main tension I have uh, by the physiotherapist is on the back shoulder here. I got uh, like, like a tension behind the, um, uh, behind the shoulder blade mm -hmm. uh, that we know it's there, but the rest of the body is fairly clean, clean out. Sometimes yeah. I'm being sore, the hands are being yeah. sore and everything. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, but when I shoot 40, and I, and I did shoot 40 for a little, 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 little bit, Mm -hmm. uh, several training session I could feel that I was absolutely not comfortable so a lot of guys they would say yeah but it's not the same recall it's not the same thing I mean I told the guy listen guys it's still shooting if you aim properly you pull yeah. the trigger properly yeah. the bullet will fly at the same spot yes but you don't have the timing you don't have yep I don't have the timing okay but I'll pull the trigger anyway when the front sight is back in line So the timing is whatever when the front side is back in there. Yeah. There's no there's no estimation. There's no maybe. It's not uh, about luck. It's about how you proceed your technique. So I shoot 40, like I would say, before a standard match. 
maybe a hundred rounds before the match, and that's all. Even really? the last, even just the to la feel it. Ju yeah, exactly. Even the last training, I shoot it in nine mm, and the last hundred rounds of the training, I shoot forty just to have a feeling of what the gun is. However, my training gun in nine mm is exactly the same than the train than the match gun in mm -hmm. forty. Mm -hmm. Exactly same, but it's in a just nine mm different caliber. All right. Yeah, we had a guy, uh, it's a, one of the Czech podcasts we did. Uh, there, there's an Olympic guy who shoots skeet. Mm -hmm. And we had, a, we had a serious discussion about how it changes the body. Because they, they repeat the thing all, all day long. They just they switch the positions. They, they But it's still, there's a huge re repetition yeah. for them. And he, he, he told me, or he told us, or every, everyone who uh, was listening, that uh, he has a friend... Uh, who are supposed to uh, get a suit for some, you know, event, and they they show up with the with the, with the suit and um, you know they put it on a um, uh, on a wall, or yeah, on a wall, on a hanger. Or oh yeah, on a hanger or somewhere, and he's like, ah, this is something wrong with that. So one of the one sleeve was longer, <laughs> sleeve was than longer, the other. but it wow. was it was recognizable, you know, by by a, by that by distance. Wow, and it was like, ah, oh, they they screw it up, and then he put it on, and it was perfect fit. Shit. They just took the right measurements and wow. it was just it. And that's a huge discussion. So that, that's uh, what led us to the question, you, if it's changed. We know that the dynamic shooting sports are more kind of dynamic and more complex. Yeah. So there's no just the standing and just presentation and, and execution. Uh, but that's uh, the background of the question. We probably have much less repetition than those guys. Like, you know, those who, are, who, yeah. do, who do a rapid fire in the yeah. Olympic. Uh, they Split have more. Yeah, they have huge problems because they're always doing this, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. movement. So they have, yeah. like, huge problem there on, on the shoulder uh, by holding the gun always one hand in that position. Uh -huh. uh, practical shooting IPSC, we don't have that much. We yeah. just keep on, you know, moving and changing position. And, and since in the training I hate repetitions, I always change also each, every, every single run, it's changed. So that means I never do twice the same thing so at the end of the day for me yeah. it's just uh, you know proceeding and it's more yeah. if we go if we compare that to the to the gym it's more crossfit style and than yeah. just you know so you take it from, the, from doing a reps. Big, bigger perspective probably but after after 30 years and 3 million rounds you don't have any like shaking in your hand or anything like that or any sore you know doing some sort of movements not really good good not to really. hear yeah not really i got hear. i got a knee issue which i know but that's from running a lot uh, okay. before uh, when i was younger uh on hard surface so the, the the joints are ruined on my left knee but beside that it's okay great great yeah and you always use the ear protection of course yeah yeah so yeah that's what uh, mr mitchell like said in one of his podcasts that um and that's a, that's a good addition um for the community because he always uses both plugs and the headphones and headphones yeah uh, I, I use a lot of headphones uh, for for training and always for indoor yeah. uh, when it comes to competition I like just to wear the plugs the electronic plugs you can see uh, that yeah exactly that's what I'm using but just for the match other than that it's uh, at the training it's earphones just that's the majority of the shooting you do yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the last questions or we prepared it's uh, it's more from the fun oh. environment. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll join with the another question later. Absolutely, on. man. Uh, and that's the what's the craziest thing you've seen on the range? You had experience, and what's the craziest, the shit you see on the range? Is there something crazy you've seen? Well, from not so much, but the, yeah, the re I mean, you, you 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 I mean, you could laugh or. It may be stupid, but first time Vegas, shot my first shot show in Vegas. Uh, we call, we go to the range and uh, we go there, bam, bang, 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 and you hear boom. It's like what the hell? And then you go to the uh, you, you you're like what something blew up. What's happening? And then you see smoke coming up the hill. So I'm, I was just curious, and they say, oh yeah, yeah, they just blew up a car. I say what? They blew up a car? What the hell? So. I went down, and there were those, uh, you know, Asians, I don't know, Chinese or whatsoever they're coming from, and they paid, I don't know how much they paid to shoot from a machine gun onto a, a, a car just to blow up the car. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> it's America. America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, so, 
yeah, yeah. for me that was uh, but that I did not 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 never did some crazy stuff we we did some shooting you know blew up some balloon with gas and it goes to yeah, big flames yeah, and we yeah, did yeah. that at the arms core range in the philippines some long time ago or throwing a throwing a coconut in the air trying to draw in the same time and oh, hit, okay. hit the coconut before it flies down or hit the, the ground the western principles of shooting yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah but it's not nothing that 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 crazy i would say oh, yes, not, not not crazy in the sense that you're taking yeah. a risk though yeah we europeans always compare with with the us and uh, yeah we always see always always find some something's crazy yeah you mentioned that you're a gun breaker so how many guns do you destroy per huh. season <laughs> huh. approximately uh it's hard to tell it depends of uh the mood i would say uh There's a possibility that I break it on purpose. Uh, oh. exa example, uh, we take a new gun and uh, I just make sure, for example, we're going to do a test of how the barrel survive with oh, a squib load. You don't see the capability yourself. So okay. we do, we do a, a on purpose squib load. Uh, of course, I don't shoot the gun. We put it on the vise and we, we go a little bit behind, sometime behind the wall. Okay. We put a, dub a double charge also on top of it and okay. then we, break, oh. we pull and we see what happened. So, That's one of the things I like to do for fun, <laughs> from time to that's time. The, that's the science part of you. Well, it's yeah. it's good to know that if something it's wrong, experiment. it will it blow up your hands yeah. or will it blow up in your face yeah. or is the gun will break eventually? Yeah. But will it hold together? Yeah. It's a kind of a safety issue, we would say. Of course. Uh, because what what happened is at some time you know we we travel and uh, you have to use the the ammunition that you find uh, in uh, in where you are. Most yeah. likely, I'm always taking my match ammo with me. I'm not shooting anyone else ammo. I don't trust that much. Yeah. But but if it's a regular match, I I might use the the local ammo at some point. So mm -hmm. I want to be sure that the gun uh, will hold whatsoever bullshit that they can do in 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 the production of ammunition potentially yeah so we do some testing like that sometime i do uh okay i got some an idea and uh not long time ago i was uh, working on an idea and uh i took um not some people would say a dremel but no i took uh actually a, a steel saw and i start cutting the shadow too <laughs> doing my testing no. science. and uh, science uh, science of Eric and then uh, yeah so this is Seb, no science Se Seb is looking at me and say what the fuck are you doing I, I just got an ID we'll fix it later that, just let me cut it and sh I'll put it the gun in and I'll shoot it and if it's good uh, then you'll fix it I can imagine so and, he's, and, he, and he's like crying and he's like that, I can't do any fixing anymore you fucked it up I say okay it doesn't matter well, I'll use it for training and then uh, you know this is the things that happen and then uh, I, then I I call Jacob. Hey, Jacob, I got a great idea. I send him a picture, and he's like, <laughs> 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 oh. "So that this this is the things I that do." Um, but basically, by the volume I shoot, most of the time we just uh, uh, change barrels uh, okay. since the, the the guns are really effective. Um, the match gun, basically, if you want, uh, my match gun when they are set, they don't shoot. They they are staying in the safe. I got a training gun, which is the same. It's a replica of the of the uh -huh. uh, of the match gun. The match gun they shoot for the three or four years. They are the same basically. So okay. match gun one shoot one match. Match gun two shoot the other match, and then match gun one again. So I'm mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. uh, placing them, and they are so much similar, so that I don't care which gun I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, but the training gun is getting the heat. So he's that's the one that suffered the most, and usually. Uh, barrel get burnt out, uh, and then it you turns. Know, it turns uh, blue. It happens, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes <laughs> it's I'm in a rush to cool it off, so I use water, so it doesn't help either. So go, okay, let's go. So oh. yeah. No, I'm on, you know. So couple couple of pistols usually. Yes. During the season. Yeah, a couple of pistols during the season, pretty yeah. much. Not 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 that bad. But you know, if we develop guns, that's part of the uh, you know when we do uh, some testing when the TS2 uh, came in. Uh, yeah. When I, when I joined, the TS2 was already in a, in the process, the orange, and the the two was in the process. The orange was or in the pre-process. Yeah. Uh, so they they sent me the gun and they said, okay, do some testing. Okay, no problem. Give it to me. I'll do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so how quick, how quick? No, exactly. So how quick? How quick? The the first question is, 
just by shooting it, how quick can you break it? How quick will the first part fail, basically? That's, that's what we need to know. I clearly see the point there. Uh, and, and we know uh, on, uh, on the CZ-75 um, concept pistol, we know the weak points. The, the, yep. the, the, the two first weak points are the extractors and the, and the slide stop pin. That's, those are the first breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but we need to know how good or how long or how short will it live and that's fairly unpredictable until you really test it and yes. the speed you know a regular shooter shoots bang bang so the gun doesn't eat up yep. so the tolerance doesn't change much when you when they shoot so usually it lasts longer ipsic the gun eats up we lose oil friction, the oil burns out, so the gun starts to run dry. Running dry creates some more friction and creates some more Heat. Uh, 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 yeah, stress also on the, on the pistols. Uh, and, and then you, you like, okay, but that's not how we wanted to, to test it out. Well, that's how I test it out. And imagine that if I do that, some people might do it worse. So, uh, you know, we have a process, yes. Uh, uh, at, at, at the factory, we get the sheet, so they ask us with a certain, uh, a certain list to follow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when it's followed, then I'll follow my gut, and I'll do, okay, let's do it, my style. <laughs> you, See. Ha you have a very great explanation for your passion for torturing guns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It breaks your heart, right? Carla? Yeah, it kind of, it kind of does. As a, his, um, as a historian and as an appreciator of, of the um, functionality aspects of, of the firearms. I already mentioned a couple of times. I totally feel with you. I love break guns. <laughs> yeah. I, I consider it as a tool. It's just uh, something to, to serve, but to you serve know, us. You know, when we do, for example, uh, test, the first uh, test I was doing when I got my Shadow 2s, is that uh, we wanted to test the uh, firing pin safeties and stuff. So you know what we do. So of course it's not a loaded round, but we put an empty empty shell with a primer. Yep. We load it. It's loaded. Hammer, drop test. Drop test, but I, I'm not doing a drop test on the mat. It's drop test on the concrete. So <laughs> drop it in. <laughs> oh. So it gets marked, damaged, and the front side is crooked, the rear yeah. side probably yeah, damaged yeah, yeah. too. And we do that three times in a row. It must not fire. So it's like, I'm a doubt. I won't cry. I got, I got some <laughs> videos that uh, no, but nobody has seen in the factory, and I'm not sure anyone wants to see it. But I'm like, here, hit, hook. Okay, we good. Let's do it again. Yeah, and it, then the extra sounds as it you know jumps multiple times. Oh, but yeah. once again, wh when you've done all of that, for me, I got the trust. I know where yes. I can push the limit. I know I can do that, and yep. I can trust the gun to do that when I need it. And that's the science part of Eric Grafell. It reminds well, I don't me... I know if it's science, but yeah. It is. I, I clearly see the point. It reminds me of the videos on YouTube, a drop test of iPhones, like yeah. it's going all the way, all the time, dropping it on concrete. Uh, I said multiple times in the past that uh, I have a hard time in watching movies when there's a police like, drop it, drop it. And he really drops it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, he did it. <laughs> Yeah, there's dead people around, <laughs> but the guy just dropped it. <laughs> no, but of course I understand the purpose oh. and uh, the logic behind that is definitely right. And uh, it's it's cool that you're doing it yourself. That you just um, that's the scientific part of you yeah. that you want to somehow develop wanna your own facility for exactly. for testing and proving yep. the yep. functionality and all the aspects connected with that. So the next question we have here is: uh, What do you hate most about guns? Is there something you hate about guns? <sighs> on the mechanical part I would say no but I hate when they fail okay and ah. a yeah. failure means it needs a fix okay and the fix is depend is it you created this or is that your ammo created that or is it the situation the yeah. where you are yeah. the fact that you shot or you didn't maintain the gun or this that created the failure yeah and um, you know what's the worst? It, yeah, the the one failure in two hundred rounds or in five hundred rounds. Yeah, but but constant. Yeah, that's the worst one. That you can't detect. If something breaks, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and you can inspect. You, you can take a look. But the the constant long term failures. Yeah, that's the worst part. That for you me. don't know where to find. You don't know yep. what's wrong, man. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's a true. nightmare. That's a nightmare for me. That's. Uh, oh, no uh, but beside that. Um, 
the the other things that I I hate the most, it's of course cleaning. Is it cleaning? No, 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 no. I would say it, it's the bad image that we give the guns. A lot of people, you know, beside that is like, uh, oh, you do shooting, so you must be a hunter. No, I'm not a hunter. <laughs> I don't like hunting. You hunt alphas. Uh, I hunt alphas. I like the 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 the, uh, the mechanical aspect and the uh, ballistic aspect of trying to perform and do the best I can do with this. You can do that. Some people would say I can do that with an arrow and a bow. It's fairly the same. You're sending a projectile somehow yep. uh, out, and you need to get the you need to get the hit. So there's a performance thing. So uh, it's the the wrong image, and that's one of the things that I'm really willing to transform and change using the Academy program as a mediatic tool to show the people that that guns are are our, our tool to I don't know to perform a sport that I would say is close to uh, karate or judo or a martial art somehow yeah. for me that 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 shooting is a martial art because you need to combine the 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 uh, the, the extension of your hand which is the pistol or the mm -hmm. firearm mm -hmm. to deliver whatever you need to it's a mastery exactly Of course, yeah. then we have the bad people that are using the guns for doing the bad things because it's an easy tool to do the bad we thing. We have bad guys using oh. cars for do, doing bad but things. But now, exactly nowadays, that they're using cars, they're using knife, they can. Yeah, I using mean, money to do bad things. Yeah, yeah, and we we need to look at so, that. So that as it is. That that's the I would say the worst thing that I'd I'd love to change as much as I can for the community for the journal, uh, let's say overview of uh, of our industry in uh, in sport yeah. that's a very similar uh thing what we are trying to uh, to actually um uh, succeed in is to um show people the guns it's just a tool uh that there are people who love them and there's nothing to be afraid of exactly. yeah. yeah and the public image is really crooked yeah yeah you can you can read articles like Uh, actually, this thing happened in Czech Republic recently that an uh, officer was in a kindergarten and a gun fired itself yeah. out of no nowhere. Yeah. That doesn't happen. No. It's always the person There's behind it. There's exactly. an action behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that brought us to uh, actually last question we have on the list. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I have one addition which just crossed my mind and I was super curious about it, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. So um, we wanted to ask you about the future, but let's join the question with your son. Okay. So you ha you have a son, he's yep. shooting. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about it. How, how was he, like your approach to uh, uh, actually raise him or did, did you... Did you Well, the thing is, introduce him to guns. How did how did it go? Uh, so they, since they're born, they know me in my work as a shooter. So yeah. I, of course, I run the company, but I shoot and I and I do that for a living, and uh, that's what bring them food at the end of the day. Um, so very quickly, the kids, uh, I've been told, even my daughter, she doesn't, she doesn't like the shooting itself. She doesn't. She's not fan of guns. She, I mean, she doesn't have any uh bad feelings about it but, yeah. but, but we okay. but we have guns at home like me i i mean she does horse riding i don't want a horse right i don't like being on a horse uh i'm okay just to give them some feed uh some food and 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 go yeah. around and bring them yeah. out if i have to but that's that's about the limit yeah maybe brush the the hair a little bit or well you know it's a 600 kilos and that's uh and that's 600 kilos that are thinking very basic And you know, 600 kilos when you are like only 70 or 80 kilos, there's not much you can do about it. If it's, it happens, it's a different happen. weight category. <laughs> yes, we're not in the same MMA. <laughs> and um, so they, they've been taught about the gun being in the house, what to do if they find a gun or for whatever reason in the house. So they know all the safety procedures. Let's say if something has to happen or if, they, okay. if for some reason the gun is left out in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And um, and my son very very soon uh, asked for getting to the range and, and do some shooting and in between as I said the the shooting range gets close so he, he he did some shooting when he was eight years old and and stuff to and some twenty twos and some. and then I brought him during the period we didn't have a range so sometime I was bringing him to a close by range do some shooting in the in a club but that was uh, you know twenty five meters and 
dark and it was a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. um, then came the academy and is uh, is like, I want to shoot. Okay, so we'll put you in the in the program, but uh, I'm not going to train you because. Uh, I prefer that you being trained with someone else, so yeah, you will fam have family related. Yeah, you will have probably more respect to someone else than it, it's for me, where you're gonna yeah. be like uh, uh, easy going, ah, and so on. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so he started to shoot, and then uh, in in this winter he said, "Hey, Dad, can you can can you can we do a training together?" So we did a training, my style, more work. It was like, oh shit, that's that's hard, that's a lot. Okay. So, but from time to time, he's asking back, hey, can we do this? Can we do that together? So I'm happy because I'm spending oh, time. Yeah, however, yeah. must be happy. Yeah. However, when he's at the training with, with one of my guy, Christian or, or, or Jean-Michel, most of the time, is I go watch him or I watch him on the camera uh, shooting. Like secretly or? Yeah, secretly on the camera <laughs> or even yeah. sometimes it's like, hey, dude, what's wrong? I send him the picture on his phone because I know, it. like, you, you've seen, he's on Instagram, so a lot of yeah, people yeah, are yeah. start to follow him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I enjoy it. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, before coming here, we went to our very first match. I mean, he shot a couple of matches off, but now after some t decent training, very first match, and, uh, and my team decided to say, he's not shooting with you. We'll put him in the squad, separated. I said, I'm good with that 100%. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit scared, I must say, like not being with him just in case. Okay. Uh, but 14 years old, be, go with the adults, do your stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I you told, know the guys. Yeah. yeah. And I told him, you know what, Robin? Uh, all I want, I don't care where you finish. All I want, you don't get DQ'd. You respect mm -hmm. the rule, you respect the safety, that's what matters. Yeah, you, 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 you will be judged anyway for that. So, because you, you, wear, uh, you, you wear the name of the mm -hmm. family and the family, we know what means in the shooting, unfortunately Absolutely. for you. So, um, uh, I, I don't put him any pressure, but I said, you shoot, do whatever you want in the score, do whatever you want in testing, in your strategy and so on, but finish the match, be safe. That's all that matters. Yep. Uh, he did it. And he came in, uh, it's a small match, 60 people, I think. He came in fifth place overall. Wow. Okay. So not too bad. 59% of me, 59% uh, and he was pissed because he shot a mic. I uh, shot a mic on the stage. He, he saw, because the, the, <laughs> the, the, the keto has actually a, a decent reading. That, that pissed me off a little bit, actually. Uh, he saw some opportunity, so he shot uh, a, a target from a position uh, but he hit the wood, so by hitting the oh, wood, it that yeah. the, the, the bullet uh, deviated and and didn't hit the target. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that was for him skipping him uh, skipping a position, so he had uh, a three second lead on all the other guys who never see that. Nice. So the idea was good. Uh, the delivering was not that, but he didn't see yeah. it. So it's learning anyway. Uh, but what bothers me the most is like when you do the briefing, you know. Uh, and that's what we do in the training uh, back in the, in the academy. So the training goes two hours, and during an hour and a half, they do a lot of technical stuff all around the training. Mm -hmm. And the last half hour, we always have one bay built with stages. So okay. the group for the training as finishes always on one or two run on the stage with a, a briefing, a walkthrough, a three-minute uh, preparation, and okay. one single run, one single bit, good, no good, that's it, done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he does that, so he goes through, he watch it one time and goes away. And I'm like, hey, you got two more minutes, go go back. No, I'm good, Dad. He's like, no, 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 no. You go back and you 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 learn <laughs> you you learn what you're going to do. You you repeat what you're going to do. Yeah, no, do your no. homework. I got it. I got it. I got, what's that? You got it. <laughs> you still have damn two minutes. No, I'm good. All right. And then he shoot the sage. He just watch it once. Well, oh. he's got a young brain, you know. It's, I don't, it's I don't easy know. Easy to remember when you're younger. And, and as I said, he's got a reading in the sense that he sees not all all options. I would say from now, but he sees options that all the other guys won't see. So yeah. it's kind of funny. It's awesome. really it's yeah. really kind of funny. So uh, yeah, it's fun. And that's the ability of the kid to surprise you. Yep. Which, which you surprise the most because uh, you are we are all looking at the at the world our way. And then there's the other guy who just has the same surname as you, and it's uh, it shares some of the genes, but it's it's different, right? But I feel I had to work for that for that part of being able to just run it once, have it memorized. I work for it, and it feels like he has like 
like this, he's got it. Yeah. Okay, right? So, yeah. and next weekend we have a competition. So, I'm bringing him to another match uh, the next weekend. Okay. So, that will be a family trip, like five o'clock morning drive. We get to the match, shoot the match, go back home uh, late evening. Uh, yeah, be fun. So, yeah. we are looking forward to see the rise of new growth. Uh, we'll see Mini Gruffle. If, 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 <laughs> Mini if, Gruffle. If, if he gets somewhere, I'm happy for him. If he's just happy with just having fun and shooting, I'm happy for him. I mean, I'm not pushing. It's For now, if you like it, do it. I'll yeah. support you. Uh, and, and if you want to stop or do something else, fine with it too. Important question. Does he blink? <laughs> I actually thought about that. <laughs> and, uh, I haven't checked. I, I should check actually. <laughs> Let us okay. know that. Uh, however, he's very emotional, so that's uh, that's one thing I need to work on him because okay. you can see when he fails, it goes all the way up here. So, yeah, but it's normally in such an age. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. You wanted to add a question? No, I'm super satisfied. I I enjoyed it so much. Oh uh, well, I can continue with one more. Uh, there is that one. Uh, you actually said the question I wanted to address because it, it is ah, not on the list. Right. And the last one uh, is about the association. Where do you see the, the future of the sport? But you kind of addressed it already. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe... So there's a sub-question. Like, do you think it's going to ever become, for example, Olympic sport or something like that? IPFC. If, if we succeed with with uh, what we are doing with the academy, that, with that is our one of podcast. the long term goals of the association. Association, am I the, right? Yes, the uh, it, it it possibly could, if we get the infrastructure uh, in the right spe uh, right spot uh, at the moment. Example, um, the Olympics twi uh, 2024 in France in Paris actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we know, the uh, shooting won't happen in Paris. The, all the shooting discipline. It will happen in Châteauroux, which is the, the main the region. Uh, national shooting center of the country. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Uh, and I'm happy for that. In that scenario here, we have all the shooting discipline on one spot. So potentially, the IPSC, as we know, IPSC requires quite a lot of space Absolutely. To, do, uh, to do one shooting discipline yeah uh, when you look at the stadium for the athletes uh, for the all the athletic uh, discipline it's one stadium where you can combine uh, several dozens of disciplines well IPSC you need actually a specific facility and that's one of the reason I believe it's hard uh, to have it today uh, available at the Olympic yeah but if in the future uh, the countries or the nations Built like a, a like a national train uh, shooting center in every country, mm -hmm. wherever the Olympic would move potentially. Well, uh, I would say the IPSC. Yeah. We need more infrastructure be, for could, that. Could be part of the uh, could be part of the Olympic. Yeah, and also what just crossed my mind: we, we should need uh, better verifying of, of the of the stages. Mm -hmm. So so uh, it it uh, so it could be more popular for for the. Um, for the fans and for the, well, for the it, TV it, and it, well but that will involve that will evolve in the sense that it becomes visual by the TV so in the uh, that if maybe uh, that's the first stage yeah to, to make it more visual to put it on TV uh, because but it's uh, already more visual than a lot of the shooting discipline mm. why this kit uh, 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 is popular because you see them bang bang and you see psh, psh, and yeah. flashes yeah. So you see immediately the result exactly you yeah. see the biathlon the biathlon you have the race but when they come to shoot yeah. you can see the, the the plate rack it goes cling 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 and you so black you hit black you hit miss it stays white yes and that yes. and that's yes. visual so and our sport is visual uh, the only thing is missing is an immediate uh, scoring that can <laughs> pops up on yeah. tv and then yeah. and uh, yeah. reposition the 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 results we have already the live scoring which is pretty quick so the only thing that now is missing is mm. to have a faster scoring uh, process between the hand of the shooter and the next one to go so that mm. within s just a few seconds, I would say, not maybe a minute like it is now, a minute, a minute and a half, within a few mm. seconds again, bing, it's up, let's go. Yeah, I, I believe that it's possible to... Sh shooting is quite, uh, quite quick. You know, the, the energy and, and the speed of the bullets... Uh, is is faster than anything we, we are able to kind of register 
uh, and electronics is pretty much the same. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that educated as Carl over here, uh, but probably even even faster. I don't know. Yep. I mean, then we are talking about the the speed of of the information. Correct. Right. Uh, so if someone develops 30 and, and more stages uh, with fully electronically I- equipped targets be it steel or be it uh, paper targets and then multiple variants for verifying but there's there's a huge question mark because there is somehow also judged bef- performance uh, as it is so it needs to be also connected with, with the ROs somehow because if you fail or if, if you break the uh, the safety rules or something it must be the connection so uh, probably which crosses my mind right now is the red button for for the RO or something uh, but it, it requires a lot of uh, lot of uh, new new development and, and new new stuff for that possibly yep but it is not impossible no nope, absolutely not yeah so hopefully yeah we'll get there we need more academies yep we need working world. on it working <laughs> on it working on it working on it is there something you want to add on for no, your I think, future uh, plans or something I, th- I think we pretty much uh, went through it's uh, you know the the year is started so we are here at the EWA show it's March beginning the season uh, I got the French Nationals I got the European and the handgun coming in September uh, Lucas we have the PCC world shoot uh, which has been moved a little bit but yep. uh, it's also a target in the for, for next year absolutely so um, yeah pretty much the season will be uh, pretty intense and uh, we'll see where it gets to us yep and we wish you the best luck yep we'll try <laughs> thank <laughs> you again for thank accepting you. the thank invitation you guys. we appreciate deeply appreciate that cool and guys. also thanks to CZ Energy and CZ itself for the opportunity that yeah. we could record it this podcast it contains here. the gunpowder and, and the Eric's sweat <laughs> 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 that makes you shoot like no like one a else god. Does. Yeah. like a god <laughs> so we were in the one of the meeting room of the uh, uh, EWA show booth of the CZ, uh, CZ group uh, at, at the EWA actually so they asked thank you for CZ to host us uh, one of the room for doing yes. this Thank you for saying so. And there'll be, of course, uh, links below the video. Um, and one of the links will be every graph of CZ Academy. Okay. So you can look what we are actually talking about here. Cool. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank Appreciate you very much. You guys Thank stay you well. Guys. And Cheers. shoot guns. Bye. Bye.